My goodness, this bright light is just atrocious. Gosh, let me close this window. All right, the other video that I wanted to go over, well, oh well, I tried. <laughs> the other video I wanted to, topic I wanted to go over was using tracking as a tool and really seeing it as a tool. Uh, and then also what we wanna be doing when we're not tracking. Because A, we don't wanna be tracking our food and weighing our food on a scale in grams and tracking it in an app for the rest of our lives. That's not the objective. The objective really is to use tracking as a tool to heighten our awareness, uh, stay more mindful, stay more accountable, and really kind of spot patterns and maybe some unsupportive habits that we either knew that we had or maybe didn't really realize that we had until we started tracking. The targets that we have are merely just that. They are targets. You want to almost think about your, uh, your different number targets as like the center of a bullseye on like an archery board. Yeah, the little red dot in the center is like, oh my gosh, if you hit that, you just like absolutely nailed it. But there's several rings around that. And if you get the arrow in one of those rings, you're still getting close to the target. We don't have to hit our targets to the exact gram in order to make fantastic progress. When we are, I'm going to speak in, in terms of dieting, fat loss. When we have a fat loss goal, Remember that we are set up with a calorie budget that is usually several hundred calories below our maintenance calories. So I'm gonna give a good just example for even numbers. If, if somebody maintains weight on 2000 calories, then technically un, anything under 2000 calories, as long as they're keeping their activity level the same and constant, anything under 2000 calories is going to be a deficit. If that person eats 1,900 calories a day, I mean, their fat loss is going to be pretty slow, but it's still going to be present. Uh, the point is that we have flexibility between, let's say that person has a 1,500 calorie budget for fat loss. Anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 is a deficit. There is flexibility there. So kind of look at the archery board as, you know, if you stay within your 1,500 calories, you're hitting the target in the bullseye, but each layer above that is kind of the 1500 between 2000 calories. You're still in a deficit. You're still making progress, just maybe not as much progress. You maybe won't progress as quickly, but that's okay. So really think about your targets and your calorie budget also as a target. It's not like a hard ceiling that's above your, your head. And if you exceed your calorie budget, your you're messing up or you know you're that's going to be spill over into body fat it's not you have room that's really important because you know with tracking macros i think a lot of people get caught up in thinking that it has to be executed kind of perfectly and it doesn't we we want to be looking at tracking as a tool because if we are hitting our protein and staying within our calorie budget uh either every single day or more often than not, we are, essentially we are, gosh, I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> oh, it's bad this morning. I don't know what's going on. If we're staying within our calorie budget and hitting our protein, we are making the most efficient progress from point A to point B that we possibly could. We can take tons of different dieting approaches. It doesn't matter if you're doing keto or low carb or paleo or if you're eating vegan or if you're eating only organic or if you're doing uh, the Mediterranean diet. It doesn't matter what your diet actually is. The only thing that really matters to make progress in fat loss is eating in a calorie deficit. So with tracking though, uh, it is the most precise that we can be because there's no way to be more accurate and more precise than weighing our food on a scale, tracking it in an app. It's really like taking the blindfold off and having a real clear picture. It's never going to be perfect ever. I want to make that clear. Even if we're tracking everything 
super, super diligently, it's still not going to be perfectly accurate. That's okay. <laughs> that is okay, trust me. Uh, but that is definitely the clearest picture that we're going to get, and we have the most control over our progress and our rate of progress. And like I said, it allows us to kind of spot some patterns that might not be serving us well. So we want to just we really want to be looking at tracking as a tool that we can toggle on and off of you know if if we have holidays or vacations or special events where tracking is just not going to be realistic that's okay we we want to also have a backup plan we don't want to become so reliant on tracking that we are losing touch on our intuitive cues what we really want to be doing, ideally, is combining intuitive cues and tracking. But intuitive cues kind of take a little bit of a precedence over tracking. Remember, tracking is just the tool. Whether we're tracking our food in an app or not, <laughs> our body is tracking. That's something that we say a lot at Macro Zinc. It's what's happening in reality that matters. It's not about your tracking. Sometimes I'll see people, um, you know, they'll track, they'll track as much food as it takes to land within the budget and hit the targets so that what's being reported looks like, oh, I'm hitting my targets. But there's all this extra food that's not being accounted for that's just getting swept under the rug. That's what you want to watch out for because... Again, it's what happens in reality that matters. So if you're hitting your targets and you're staying within your calorie budget, but there's a lot of food that's not being accounted for, chances are you're not actually within your calorie budget. You are either eating more in a gentle deficit or potentially negating the deficit that you're trying to build. You want to be honest with yourself and in your tracking. That's one of the beautiful things about the tool of tracking is that if you're using it correctly and you're being honest with yourself and accounting for everything that you're consuming, yeah, that might sting a little bit, but you're going to get the most out of it because you're really going to be holding yourself accountable. You're going to be really getting the, the clearest picture of what's happening in reality. And again, it's what's, re what's happening in reality that matters. If we're doing some nighttime snacking or um, we're doing some taking licks and bites and tastes and we're not tracking those things, those are the very things that could wind up leaving us spinning our wheels or perhaps worse than that those are the habits that if we don't address them and work to fix them and, and replace those habits with better ones and develop better stress management and coping strategies if we just kind of leave those unaddressed then come the day that you do reach your goal or you let go of tracking, those are still going to be there and you might wind up sliding backwards and kind of regressing in your progress. So you want to use tracking as a tool and a way to stay completely accountable to yourself. Now, again, let's go back to when you aren't going to be tracking during a holiday or special event or something like that where it's maybe not appropriate or you just want to take a break from tracking. Again, regardless of tracking it, it it matters what you're doing in reality and it's a great opportunity to kind of take off the training wheels of tracking put the kind of blindfold back on because if you're not tracking there is no way to know the energy coming in that should not make you nervous this is a really good opportunity for you to learn how you can still stay in control and still get the job done without needing to know the you know the accuracy and the actual energy and macros that are coming in. It's great to know those things. It's great to be aware of them, but we don't want to be so reliant on it that we feel like we're out of control or um, you know the second we let go of tracking, you know our body is just going to betray us. And the worst thing that that we want to avoid is oh is saying, "Oh, well I'm not tracking, so therefore all of my choices and actions are going to be completely different than they would be if I was tracking. What you do, the choices and the actions that you take, should remain the same regardless of whether you're tracking or not. So when you go on vacation, you still want to be mindful about 
your choices, uh, you know, you want to be thinking protein when, when you're go, no, navigating throughout the day and you're, it's getting time to eat. You want to be thinking protein first and then fruits and vegetables and keeping yourself satiated without consuming a ton of calories. The great thing about tracking is that it heightens our awareness about what's actually in the food that we're eating. We're getting a sense of what portions we, sh- we should be eating for our body's goals. And we just kind of want to drag that into a non-tracking situation. We still want to kind of navigate as if we are still tracking, we're just not putting in an app. That is the skill that you want to work on and take those opportunities to work on those skills because come the day that you let go of tracking, those are going to be your compass. You're going to be relying on what you learned when you were tracking when you go more intuitively. And you also are going to be relying largely on some of the intuitive cues like respecting and honoring your hunger and satiety cues. Honoring hunger and satiety cues can really lead to really great maintenance. Um, But if we also couple that with keeping our portions about the same as they were that we learned were kind of appropriate for us and still making sure that we're prioritizing protein and mostly whole foods and, you know, just kind of limiting some of the fun foods. And we can do that. We can maintain pretty dang well if we are practicing those skills. It's really only when we kind of mentally check out and slide back into our old comfortable patterns and don't practice that mindfulness and really kind of putting in in the work in this way that we will wind up kind of, uh, you know, going backward. So I just wanted to kind of go over... uh, I wanted to go over this because it's something to really keep in mind. You you always want to be thinking about tracking. Not be it's not the end all be all. Uh, it's a great first hand educational course on nutrition because you're learning nutrition for you. It's applicable to you and your body for your goals right now. But it's something that we do want to let go of and be able to navigate uh, without it just intuitively. And that's kind of like if you think about that. If you are able to do that and maintain your weight, you are no longer going to have to do any kind of crash diet. You're never going to have to fall for any kind of, you know, BS that's floating out around there. And you're going to have the ultimate freedom being able to dine out, go on vacation, the holidays. It doesn't matter what the obstacle is. It doesn't matter what time of year. You're going to be completely in control, even without an app and tracking because you're going to be so confident you've practiced those skills and ultimately that's really the objective so if you have any questions about any of this please let me know i hope that this is helpful and i hope that you'll keep this in mind as you continue forward and with that said i also i know that macros inc has the word macros right in the title it kind of implies that we are a tracking macros exclusive company but we are nutrition coaches at the end of the day i have clients that are not tracking so if and and tracking is not a one size fits all method again it's just a tool so if at any point you feel like you either want to start letting go from tracking or you want to take a different approach maybe go with some guidelines instead um that's okay just let me know i just wanted you to know that we're using tracking as kind of the primary method, but it's not the only method. All right. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Have a great Saturday. Let me know any questions or concerns that you might have and um, enjoy your weekend.